Hi guys and welcome to Train Sim TV. Welcome to what is our very first Train Sim Classic video and it has actually been our first video for some time. Um, been very busy with other bits and pieces, just not had the time to do the video unfortunately. But uh, nevertheless we are here and we have a brand new product and route and train to show off to you. Um, it's the newly released Glasgow um, underground route which is from Thompson Interactive this has literally just been released and we're gonna get straight in here uh, take a look have a little play just show you what the route has to offer really uh, we're gonna be taking a drive with the uh, Metro Camel uh, stock which comes with the route um, these were built between 1977 and 79 in the uh, orange livery here uh, so good morning driver today your train will form service 14 on the outer circle prepare your train and drive in manual mode to depot line 2 where you'll change cabins and reverse to your first station stop at Govan. Be careful to slow down on the approach and ensure that the whole train is in the platform at Govan before opening the passenger doors. Close the window to begin. There we go. Right, easy. Right, so we find ourselves presented in the depot. Um, the only, well, is the only bit of a uh, route that has the scenery. If you, if you will. So you can see here, um, <clears throat> this, this is only the bit of route that comes outside, um, away from the tunnels. Um, so there's only a little bit of scenery to actually see. The rest of the route is in tunnels, uh, as to be expected with an underground route. But there's not, some nice little bits of detail. I've had a little fly around already uh, before doing this video, just to get a bit of a feel and what's what. So the route itself um, and the trains are powered by the third rail. Um, a little bit more higher raised than your traditional London underground, as you can see. Um, as well there. Um, there's all sorts of bits of detail going on here, some like protective wooden boards there. Um, nice depot. Um, I said the depot, um, not this bit, but where are we? We're over here I think, aren't we? I'm just double checking. Yeah, here. So as you can see, the depot doors are going to be interactive because how are we going to get out there? We will find out very shortly. Well, yeah, the depot's nice. I, I like the look of this depot. Um, some nice uh, bits of detail. The train's looking good as well. That's a bit of a look about of um, class 150 slash O or one about it. If you look at the front, we've been so flush. So all the uh, the detail on the shoe. There you can see the sh the shoes quite high up on these. Yeah, it's looking good. So we'll uh, we'll have a little play with that in a second. Just going to take another look outside here just to see what's going on up here. So we're going to drive down this bit of route and then we're going to go up to the head shunt up here change ends and then we're going to reverse and run down the tunnel and uh, go into the underground so we'll go and get ourselves set up and uh, have a little play with the train the train wash there as well some nice detail in there love all the rust marks and all the, like the weathering it's really cool i love this it's quite a cool little shape isn't it as well just a little cutouts around where the third rail goes and then you've got the shape of the train that's brilliant This came about not long ago, really, on the um, articles that this was coming out. So it was only about a week or so ago um, that that was announced, and uh, here we are now playing with the route. Uh, it went on to say that um, Thompson Interactive done this route basically as a bit of a, ple a pleasure project during uh, the lockdown times, um, which is totally understandable because I think quite a lot of people um, did a lot of lockdown projects, uh, whether it was freeware or not. Um, but again, it's nice to see something else come. Um, out and something to come off that so yeah excellent anyway let's go and get ourselves in the train so i'm just going to pause for a second just so we can have a little look around so some nice detail in there you got all the cab detail in there you got all the cab controls so we'll have a play with that in a second set up some more bits and pieces over there which we'll have a play with to get into your passenger view uh, Different passenger views, you've got to go across with all the arrows like this. It takes you through all different uh, settings. You can see the train is actually dead and empty at the minute. There's nothing going in there. And that will be explained um, in a little while as we move on. Right, let's get the key. Oh, there's no key. I thought you put the key in it. No, you don't. Right. So into forward. Uh, we don't want the tail lights on or wipers. Instrument lights can go on. Headlights on. So hopefully they're set. Yep, they are. Good of ATO as well, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, what else have we got over here? So we want to take the parking brake off. Uh, we'll put the saloon lights on. 
Uh, I think that's everything else at this moment in time. You can open the door, uh, the window. Sorry, there. You can open the front door as well, which is really cool. See the actual detail of the door uh, mechanism as well. Look, actually, the bar actually goes up. Anyway, let's get ourselves moving. Hopefully, I've got this right and all set up. We are moving. It's actually 18 mile an hour. A kilometre, sorry, not mile an hour. Let's just watch the doors. There you go. So the doors are all automatically all go up and they'll go on a, a chat link so they'll know when the train's approaching. A bit like a level crossing. And then they'll open themselves up and let the train through. And then when you've cleared them, they'll uh, shut again. The cool little horn as well. Well, I mean, I want to try and get a little screenshot because there could be a potential thumbnail, you see. Maybe we're going for one in the tunnel, but I don't know if the tunnel's going to be a bit too uh, too enclosed for a screenshot. It's got its own custom sounds as well, as you can hear. No recycled noises going on, which is nice. Keeping it a shunt keeps it virtually where you want it to be as well. This little bit of scenery detail, it's really nice. Got a nice little feel to it. So we are clear of all the point work there, as you can see. Bit break squill. Right, let's uh, turn this end off. So the windows shut. Just gonna wait for the task to pop up. Right, there we go. Well done. Now move on to the rear cabin and drive yourself to the first passenger stop at Gavan. I'm hoping I'm getting these right, by the way. Beep, beep. It's a comical little uh, horn, that is. <coughs> Apologies to the coughing. I'm still trying to. I'm still getting through um, a bit of illness I've had recently. I've had quite a bad cold and cough and everything. I've had a bit of a chest infection, to be quite honest. I'm still sort of just getting a bit through uh, on that. But you'll have known on the streams I was really, really chested the other day. But I'm not as bad as I was. Just the cough catch me out sometimes. Especially when I'm mid-sentence. So you can see as well, it tells you on the uh, on the actual dash what speed you should be doing. So that'll flick through as it moves along. And again, as I mentioned before, these trains do have ATO. So we'll be having a look at that very shortly. I need to... If you hold it at the actual speed, you can see it's actually holding you at the right speed as well. So if you keep it in shunt, it'll actually keep the brakes and it'll, they'll fluctuate 
and hold you at the right speed so you'll never creep over which is really cool which I think is a really good little feature you can change service numbers as well as you see on here um, basically you just flip between so we're service 14 It's quite loud when you get in the tunnel. And that's where the windows are uh, not actually open. Now actually ramp up to 55. So you can see on the platform that there's characters and they're actually static. Now, if you listen to uh, what I told you before where the train's actually dead and empty, there's a reason for this. We'll soon find the reason why. So if I go, without overshooting too much, into the actual passenger view, open the doors, you should see, hopefully, that people will start disappearing. Oops. Maybe they don't want to get on. What happens is basically the characters that are on the platform will move and actually get onto the train. So you'll see them all stood up in the train, but they don't seem to be wanting to do it here. So hopefully it's just because I've overshot. Right, so um, we now have a. Uh, auto drive permit as shown on the desk so if I go back into the actual cab you can see that down there basically at the bottom so to enable ATO which is automatic train operation move the reverser into the notch marked A and then push down uh, the throttle brake controller to P and then you can press the button basically there's a button that uh, starts ATO there so what we'll do um, pop it into A into P, so at the minute you can see the train's not moving, and then all we need to do is click start, and it is driving itself. I am doing nothing now, it's literally all doing it itself. The brakes are um, fluctuating between themselves now, holding its uh, speed. So we've got, we're going to climb up now as well, so you'll see that the brakes will probably lift that, come back off again, and it'll start powering. You see the amps are now powering back up again. The brakes are off. It's a really cool, unique selling point, I think, this. You don't see ATO very often in train sim. See the gradient come up into the station. That's a big climb. <laughs> I've had to knock the game sound down a little bit as well, just because it's so loud. That is one of my little drawbacks, is that the sound is really, really loud. But it is what it is. So the train stops itself as well for you. All you have to do is to actually open the doors. Press the T. Yeah, I see the people are now getting on the train. They don't actually leave the platform belts, do So some nice details in the station as well. Pretty basic and standard, really. Pretty simple designs. But they look really, really nice. And they're all custom. Pretty 
Prince Harry then. <laughs> right, so, total shot, press start, and the train will start itself back off again. So, Kelvin Hall's the next station. We're on the outer line as well for this. I'll just show you the map of the route as well. So, it's literally a circle with a little stub for the depot. Got a mixture of um, island and outer platforms as well. Most of them, I think, are island platforms. I think. If I get that right. Might be the other way around, actually. No, most of them are sort of like you know, more traditional. But there is, there is some island platforms. I've seen them. I had a look on the map. Where are they? If I keep going around in a circle, I might find them. Could be that one. That was like a, a an island platform with a line in the middle. Yeah, this one is as well. Though. Yeah, there is a mixture. Some nice little detail in the signals as well. Look, they're all custom uh, signals for the route. Look like padlock detail and stuff on them. Don't think I could get a. Uh... Maybe I can get a thumbnail. I don't know. Don't have a lot of work to be quite honest, but we'll try. Right, in we get. Let's go sit in the passenger view. Did that light come on its own then for the tunnel? Really, really bright. It's actually a route you can drive without having the hood on as well, which is cool. I'm loving the detail. It's really cool. Again, it's something different. I don't think it's going to be something I drive all the time, but it's something different. I think you'd eventually get probably the same sort of uh, types of scenarios come through, but unless people can do something different with it. It's just something a little bit different sometimes, uh, to have a little just a visit when you're bored of the usual stuff. It is really, really loud though. That, that Auxiliary noise, I think it's auxiliary noise or something like that. It's just really, really, really loud. So I've had to turn it down a little bit. I'm going to go back in the uh, passage view because I want to just see if, if the lights come on as you set off. I'm going to have to go back in here actually first. So I'm going to press the start button. There'll be a key for that, but I don't have a clue what it is. See if the lights come on. Yeah, they do. That's cool. So there must be a marker in the track somewhere that he knows when it's going into the tunnel it puts the lights back on. Good light in here. There's two settings. Press L twice to get it going bright, and then uh, shift and L to turn the light back off. 18 stops. So we go back in. I think we're going back into the depot after this. 40 minute scenario all in. Uh, 
How long is it back to the depot? That is a question I can't see yet. I'll look for that in a second. Eight kilometres all the way around. It's actually not half far. A little bigger than what it is on the map. It's so loud. <coughs> Excuse me. God. I tried to turn the mic off at the same time and I didn't quite catch it. Press that all the way down, man. Let's just see how loud it is with the window open. St George's Cross next, and then we've got Carol Cadden's. <clears throat> All quite close to each other. A few kilometres apart, really. I think that window makes a massive difference, to be fair. It doesn't get louder or quieter. Of course, you don't have to drive with ATO if you don't want to. You could drive it manually. I'd end up overshooting the platforms. That's the issue. Next stop, Kakans. Oh, that's cool. Next stop, Kakans. So it must know when you're going over something that it changes that announcement as well. That's really cool. That sounds like um, Alan Thompson of Thompson Interactive that's done that. It really is a nifty little uh, pack though, it's got, it's got a bit of everything in it. It's the complete package. What would be really cool for this is because they're obviously modernising, I think they're modernising the fleet, aren't they, in real life? Um, we're getting new trains. So the, the potential's there for newer trains as a DLC. You can actually have them as well. That'd be really cool. There's always that potential. It's a bit of a tight curve here. There's a lot lower speed limit. A bit less curve into the station. Climbed up a gradient there as well. Really steep gradient. And the platforms on the gradient as well. That must have been a fun uh, job for the asset developers to get that right. Get everything matching. The platforms as well, I've noticed, have all got their own sort of style of design. A bit like London. They've all different colour schemes and different patterns around the. Uh, like the cladding and stuff. You can see the grade on the green the green banner that goes along the side. When it drops down. One thing I will say, the, the, the platform textures are actually going on the skew with the 
different, not exactly following the actual platform shape, if you will. That's one little gripe I'd look at. Something I'd look at in me, in me day job. Beep, beep. <clears throat> so max speed of these is 34 miles per hour or 54 kph. The powered by a 600 volts DC third rail. The trains themselves have a width of 2.34 meters and the vehicle lengths are 12.54 meters. Uh, they weigh 20 tons as well per car and the coach wheel arrangement is Bobo. Uh, the numbers range on the uh, on this class is uh, 101 to 133 as well. The route itself, as well, is um, the third oldest oh, uh, sorry, underground metro system in the world after London Underground and the Budapest Metro. Uh, originally a cable driven railway, as well, the subway was later then electrified. Uh, in 1936, it was named the Glasgow Underground. However, many Glaswegians continue to refer to the network as the subway. Uh, in 2003, the name subway was officially uh, readopted by a Strathclyde partner, Ship for Transport. Uh, the subway system was constructed as a twin bore 6.5 mile uh, circular loop that runs north and south of the River Clyde. The track gauge is 4 foot uh, with the nominal tunnel diameter of 11 foot. The outer circle and inner circle refers to the double track having trains running in clockwise and anti-clockwise uh, respectively around the same route in separate tunnels. The subway's running lines are entirely underground with a maintenance depot at Broom Loan Road uh, between Gavan and Ibrox. Prior to modernisation, trains were lifted by crane into the depot above. Um, modernisation in 1980 brought the uh, installation of points and access ramps where the trains can now access the depot for storage maintenance. Apologies for my phone going off there. mute that. How unprofessional. A bit more history for you. In 1981 the Glasgow District Subway Company began construction of the underground. The uh, subway opened on the 14th of December 1986 as a cable railway with one single cable power in each circle. A steam powered engine between West Street and Shields Road stations drove the cables. Um, there were no points on the line with no way to drive to the surface. Instead, the train vehicles were transferred to and from the running lines by a crane operated over a pit at Goban Depot. All 15 stations were built with centre platforms, so trains only required to open one side of the uh, doors. Uh, Glasgow Corporation took over the system in 1923 and 19. And then in 1935, existing trains were converted to third rail electric power. Before the 1977 and 1980 modernisation programme, the station had very distinctive smells and passengers were rocked forwards and backwards between uh, backwards while the carriage shugled them around, apparently. <laughs> Never heard of that term before, shugled. I assume that means uh, throwing them around, basically, potentially. By the 70s, the stations uh, were all very dilapidated um, and there were no escalators and only Kelvin Bridge had a lift. The use of the subway had also declined partly by the closure of some of the dockyards on the River Clyde. The original carriages dating back to 1896 were still in use and breakdowns were becoming very uh, frequent. In 1974, the modernisation plan was announced. Does it not want to uh, auto start you? Yeah? Or do I have to drive it here? Let's have a look. No idea what it's doing here. Right, it's doing it now. 
had a little moment. Uh, on the 21st of May 1977, the system was shut down for major refurbishment and modernisation. Tons were repaired, station were rebuilt and enlarged with additional platforms at Bu uh, Buchanan Street, um, Partick, Govan and Ibrox, Hillhead and St Enoch. Heavier track was installed, although still using the four foot uh, gauge. The original Broomlow depot was modernised and equipped with connecting tracks with points to replace the crane and depot pit. A new ticketing system with passenger onboard ticket vending machines and automatic turnstile barriers was also added. The modernisation system also features automatic train operation. There you go, a little bit of history for you. I like here for the Citizens Theatre. Next stop, Bridge Street. Bridge Street next. So the route features. I'm just going to go over the route features quickly for you. I'm just going through the manual here, basically. Just re relaying what this says. So four foot uh, gauge track system with third rail, signaling with custom designed signal models, uh, which also operate ATO. New random onboard passenger system to vary the visible uh, amount of people in the train. Uh, multiple passenger views with the cameras and functionality emergency stop. With functional emergency stop handles, eh? Where? How did I not know this? So where are they? <gasps> ah, you can pull the emergency brake. That's cool. I'm not going to do it because I'll end up doing something I can't get myself out of. But you can pull them apparently. That's cool. Uh, operating on board public addressment system there, uh, announcing stops from the cabin. Next stop, West Street. There we go, next stop, West Street, cheers all. 15 highly detailed stations, depot models uh, with driving functionality, animated shed doors, and operating train wash. Oh, do we get to do the train wash on the way back in, maybe? That'd be cool. Um, route fully configured for quick drive scenarios. On the in and out of route, and seven career scenarios are also included, including a guided tutorial for the ATO controls. So, there's a little bit of everything there. Uh, the manual then gives you all the details to do with all your controls and ha how things operate and what you can do, what key to do, what, and all that as well. There's a signal guide as well, it tells you all the signals and what they do, uh, too. Uh, finally, at the end, uh, is the end user agreement stuff. So basically, it just tells you about scenarios and stuff. So basically, the way uh, Tom's Interactive are, um, they don't allow development uh, for anything like commercial stuff. Basically, anything to do with scenario packs, route enhancements, order enhancements. Um, but if you are interested in working with them, you can contact them through their website. Uh, they do um, obviously encourage scenario creation. Um, they, they recommend and encourage you to use the workshop, but they, they are happy for you to release them on uh, other websites as well. So like stuff like on track simulation and stuff like that so you don't you're not just limited to the workshop if you don't prefer to use that but is that that is where they try and encourage people to use them on that platform so that's manual basically in a nutshell to be quite honest pretty comprehensive quite a nice manual i will say loads of detail in it uh, right shields road next so how many station we've got left here not many. Four stations. And then we're back into the depot to wrap things up. It's really cool to actually not have to drive a train. I can just focus on talking to you. All I've got to do is press T. It's brilliant. But again, you don't you don't have to just drive it on ATO. You you can still drive it manual if you wish. It's more if you're lazy, uh, so and so like me. I've always wanted to do something like this where you can have something that drives itself for you and you can just uh, get on with the talking without worrying about missing any stations. A yellow banner and uh, blue outlining this one. So we're like here for where? Scotland Street School Museum. No trains just arrived. Can't 
go right into the tunnel. Might make a nice thumbnail actually with the tunnel. I'm gonna try some of it. <clears throat> try and get into a decent position here. Overlay me text around in a, in a sort of like arch it over the tunnel. Where are we going to next, Alan? Killing Park. Next okay. Stop. Killing Park. I'll put all the links and everything in the description below um, if you wish to purchase this product. See our last three stations now on the hood. King Park, Cessnock and Outer. Cessnock. Cessnock next stop. Good textures are right on this one. I've not really seen any issues at all. Really glaring problems with route. The route itself, pretty well made. I mean, it's not hard, is it? Really, to do some tunnels and some stations in between them. It's pretty. It's a pretty basic setup in terms of building. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a lot of customs. <laughs> the the whole route basically must be built in custom tunnels, unless it's been done with lofts. I think it'll be done with custom tunnels. To be fair, well, I could be wrong though. Until you, unless you're going to route building, editing, you, you sort of uncover all that uh, little bit of secret and see how it's been built. I would presume it probably is lofts. I'm probably going with the, the stabbing chance of it being loft, but I could be wrong. The under, when we did the Met line at JT, that that was all, all the tunnels were done as custom assets in that one. So unless it's been done the same way as this, I don't know. Alright, once you start arriving at the platform, you can't. Next stop, Cessna. Let's do it now. It won't work anymore. Cessna. That's a bit of a district line colour to it, doesn't it? And some of like the colours in the train. Maybe old Bakerloo, maybe. Could be Bakerloo. Ibrox is next. Ibrox next stop. And that'll have us done a full circle. Literally. I hope we can do the train wash. That'd be cool. <clears throat> also, the route runs really, really smoothly, as to be expected, because there's not really any scenery going on. We're at 116 FPS currently. Which now to be grumbling up.
That's cool. Did it itself then. It's telling you to terminate him. Hendrix next time. That's cool. Let's go off into it. Into the uh, them. Oh, enjoyable that. Right. What do we next? As we terminate our service here at Ibrox and returning to depot, we must disable ATO. First, we turn the throttle back to uh, full brake, um, and then move your reverse not to F. You can drive to the manual in, into the depot uh, line one manual mode. If you're already driving in manual, then you can continue without changing controls. Basically, excellent. Right, okay. So I'm into full. Into F. There we go. We have control. I don't see any speed limits going to the depot, so we full speed. Could be wrong. That was some hidden speed limits. Slowing itself down, so it must know there's something happening. D for depot, I presume. So there's a crossover there, so it's basically a triangle junction here. That's where we started our journey at the other end, just through there, see where the traps coming in. It's really nifty, I like it. It's different. I love the operations on it as well, like you get to come out of the depot, do a trip and then go back in. I wonder if it does that all day. I can't see him going in and out of the depot all day. Just for scenario purposes, surely. car mark which is also very wonky look. <laughs> well, wonky concrete post that's cool let's turn all this off <clears throat> right well done now move to the rear cabin and return to the depot in road 19 I don't think we're going by the wash Never mind.
again guys the route um, is in the description below um, just go and have a look in there and you'll find it towards the top um, again go, go and purchase it I recommend this massively um, if you like your subway routes and uh, sort of quirky quirkiness uh, of like sort of all things wonderful and go ahead and have a, have a go of it I don't think you'll be disappointed it's different Service is terminating here at Ibrooks. I love it. It's nice. Recommend it massively. You can open that door as well. So, Road 19. the door. Right, it's absolutely brilliant this, excellent stuff. Hats off to the team that um, have put this together. They've done an absolute sterling job. I say, I've not really seen any massive issues with it. At all. Excellent stuff. No, it's fantastic. Thoroughly enjoyed that. I'm trying to pause that there because otherwise it'll end um, on the menu. So massive thanks um, again for watching this one, guys. Everything in the description if you wish to have a, a play yourself. Um, hopefully we'll get some more videos to you very very soon about um, the big big gap. I know Mark's got some stuff planned as well, so hopefully you'll see that soon. Um, I know the seat and branch has just been released by uh, Golden Age Developments and I think he aims to sort that next so that'll be coming very soon uh, from Mark. Um, excellent. Anyway, cheers for watching guys. Uh, take care and uh, we'll see you very very soon on the next uh, video. Don't forget you can catch it on Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash trainsim underscore TV. Usually on Fridays and Sundays uh, so do come along and join us there for a, um, a bit of banter and a bit of a laugh um, some, some scenarios or route building we do a bit of everything on there um, so yeah come join us. We'll see you there hopefully take care guys. See you soon and again thank you very much for watching bye for now